Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel and I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So today we're going to continue with our country series looking at Pakistan. So what you'll see also on this channel is a whole range of other country studies that we've done on countries all over the world. So if you're interested in other countries too, please check those out. In this country series, which we will do three videos on, we'll look first at migration history in Pakistan, then migration policy and governance, and then we'll look at the modern day migration situation with regard to Pakistan. But in this first video, I want to look at the migration history in Pakistan. So if you're interested in the other videos, of course you can check those out also after this one. So when we look at the history of Pakistan, I want to look at several different points in time. So I want to look first at the pre-partition period between 1885 and 1940 and what's called the canal migration that happened during this period. Then from 1947 on, when we had partition, we saw one of the greatest migrations in history. Then from 1971, we also had the independence of Bangladesh, which was formerly East Pakistan and also saw a lot of migration during this period. Then in the 1980s, or at least starting in the 1980s, we saw an increase in migration of Afghans to Pakistan for, because of forced migration reasons. Then starting in the 1970s on, we also had migration to the Gulf Cooperation countries or GCC countries. And then I also want to look at migration to Europe and migration to North America. So let's just jump right in and look at where Pakistan is. So for those of you that don't know, Pakistan is really at a crossroads between South Asia, Central Asia, and the Middle East. It is sandwiched between India on the east and Iran and Af Afghanistan on the west side of Pakistan. So let's now talk first about the canal migration from 1885 to 1940. Again, this is pre-partition. So this is when India, Pakistan, Bangladesh were actually all together under British rule. So at this time, there was mass migration from Eastern and Central Punjab to Western Punjab, which is actually now Pakistan. It began in the mid 1980s when the British colonial government started construction of canals for irrigation during this time. And this British policy or project caused the first large scale migration settlement, um, which was known as the Canal Colonies. So between the early 1900s and around 1931, it's estimated that 1.6 million people migrated to these Canal Colonies. Now let's look at the partition. So the partition I'm talking about now was in 1947 and it was where we saw India and Pakistan be split um, at the time. And this was then triggered one of the largest migrations in history. This is also when the British rule ended in India. And then, of course, then the subcontinent was partitioned in August of the same year into these two independent states. So we had India, which was the Hindu majority, and Pakistan, which was a Muslim majority. Now, because of this partition, we saw millions of people migrating between the, the East, so India, and the West, which was Pakistan. And of course, this also this had to do mainly because of religious reasons and we had this kind of huge population swap at the time. So there are lots of different estimates out there, but roughly 7.2 million Muslims migrated to Pakistan and 5.5 million Hindus and Sikhs migrated to India. Um, and these were also mainly the migrants who had settled in the Kano colonies previously in Pakistan. So migration between Pakistan and India also continued until 1971. And the migration between 1885 and 1940 as a result of the partition has really had a very large impact on politics, economics, and sociology of the region. So partition was a really important milestone of the time. Then in 1971, there was the independence of Bangladesh, which was formerly East Pakistan from Pakistan. And this independence also increased migration to Pakistan. 
So with this independence, hundreds of, of thousands of Biharis, which were Ud Urdu speaking Muslims, uh, were left in Bangladesh. And afterwards, basically, these were also considered stranded Pakistanis and they demanded repatriation from Bangladesh to Pakistan. So between the years of 1973 and 1993, almost 200,000 Baharis were transferred to Pakistan by the Pakistani government. There are still thousands of Baharis in Bangladesh who are often unwelcomed by the Pakistani and Bangladeshi governments. Here you can actually see in this map where a lot of these transfers happened and how the Indian subcontinent looked and where the partitions were done at the different points in time. So you can see here where Pakistan was partitioned and then also later Bangladesh. Then we can turn to at least the start of the Afghan migration to Pakistan in the 1980s. And this was really forced migration, refugees from Afghanistan moving to Pakistan. So and basically this started in the 1980s and this was due to the invasion of Afghanistan by the Soviet Union in December of 1979. In 1989, the total number of Afghan refugees reported in Pakistan was close to 3.3 million people. So really a, a enormous migration to Pakistan during this period. Uh, so from 1980 to 2002, Pakistan hosted the world's largest refugee population. And most of the Afghans actually settled just across the border in the provinces in Pakistan that bordered pa Afghanistan. In addition to Afghans in the 1980s, large numbers of Muslims migrated to Pakistan from Burma also because of religious persecution there. Now let's turn to labor migration in Pakistan and particularly labor emigration. So starting in the 1970s, we saw an increase of migration to the Gulf Cooperation countries or GCC countries. Pakistan has a long history with the GCC countries, particularly with Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates with regard to trade, diplomatic and labor support. The huge outflow of Pakistanis began really in the early 1970s when we saw oil prices boom in the GCC countries, which created a large labor demand in those countries. In the early 1980s, approximately 2 million Pakistanis migrated to the GCC countries for work. And currently more, more than 96% of Pakistani migrant workers go to GCC countries, mainly to Saudi Arabia and to the United Arab Emirates. So you can definitely see here that these are the two most important countries, but they're not the only ones in the GCC where Pakistanis go. Besides Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, they're also migrating to Oman, Qatar, Bahrain, and Kuwait. And of course, here you can see how these numbers have fluctuated over time. For most of the countries, it stayed pretty stable from 2011 to 2020. You can see that with Saudi Arabia, there have been more fluctuations in the number of Pakistanis there. Now we can turn to migration to Europe. And migration to Europe really started with very small numbers in the 1960s and 70s. Um, and this was mainly for economic reasons. In the 1980s, the number of forced migration or the numbers of forced migrants to Pakistan increased to the West, including to Europe. And this was due to social and political issues or suppression in Pakistan. And in the early 90s, the EU saw its first flows of irregular migration from Pakistan. In 2015, Pakistanis were the sixth largest first time asylum seekers in Europe, or at least in the EU. And within Europe, the UK hosts the largest Pakistani diaspora. And this is really due to historical ties. If you're interested in the term diaspora and actually what that means and everything in it tells, you can check out my other video on who diaspora are and what this term entails. So now let's zoom into the UK situation since uh, the UK does host the largest number of Pakistanis or Pakistani diaspora aside from the GCC countries. 
Pakistani migration to the UK increased in the 1950s and 60s. This was at the time mainly young males uh, for work from AJK, which is Azad, Jammu and Kashmir, especially from the Marpur district of the AJK. So other Pakistanis who migrated to Britain at the time or in the 1960s also included Punjabis, but they were generally from urban areas and mo of Punjab and mostly educated. Between 1951 and 1966, there were estimated to be around 5,000 Pakistanis, including Bangladeshis, in Britain. In 1951, there were estimated to be 5,000 Pakistanis, including Bangladeshis, in Britain but this had increased to over 100,000 in 1966. And in 2011, Pac the Pakistani diaspora was reported as the second largest minority group in the UK after the Indian diaspora. There have also been a number of Pakistani asylum seekers to the UK, which really took off in the 1990s and has decreased in the 2000s, but there was quite a lot of fluctuation in asylum seeking in the UK at that time. Now we can look at Pakistani migration to the Nordic countries and the most important Nordic country for Pakistani migration is really Norway. For the first time, 10 Pakistanis arrived in Oslo, Norway in 1967 and they were mainly from uh, um, Gujarat and Punjab provinces. Over the past five decades, the population of Pakistanis in Norway has reached almost 40,000 um, in the country. There are, of course, Pakistanis in other Nordic countries as well, but Norway has really historically been the most important country for Pakistani migration. And between 2015 and 2016, Norway was the largest source of foreign direct investment in Pakistan. Here you can also see how the migration of Pakistanis changed year by year from the 1970s in Norway to today. Now we can look at another important destination for Pakistani migrants, which is North America. So mainly looking at the US and Canada. In 1965, the US relaxed its immigration laws for Pakistanis and, and other groups. And as a result, Pakistani migration to the US increased during this period, especially between the 1960s and 1980s for family reunification, education, and skilled workers such as doctors, physicians, and engineers. In the 1990s, the, we had the Immigration Act of 1990 that established the Diversity Visa Program, which is also known as the Green Card Lottery. And this allowed more Pakistani migration from diverse communities in Pakistan. Now, really after the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001, the US, the US government passed the Enhanced Border Security and Visa Entry Reform Act, and as a result, immigration decreased from Pakistan to the United States. But since 1965, more than 70% of Pakistani migration to the United States occurred between the 1990s and 2009. And after the UK and the GCC countries, the largest, Pac the largest Pakistani diasporas are in the United States. You can also see here that from the early 2000s to 2020, that we saw more Pakistani immigration from 2005 on. You can also see here where, at least with regard to metropolitan areas, where many Pakistanis have settled. So with a greater amount go settling in New York, Washington DC, Houston, Chicago, Dallas, Fort Worth, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and Atlanta as the key most important cities in the United States. Now, if we turn to another North American country, uh, Canada, we can also see that after the introduction of the point system in Canada, the migration of Pakistani, specifically skilled or semi-skilled, really increased during the 1990s to Canada directly from Pakistan, but also as well as from some other countries like the GCC countries where Pakistanis were residing and then moved to Canada from those countries. So according to the 2016 census, around 200,000 Pakistanis were residing in Canada at the time, and most of them were residing in Ontario. 
Between 2006 and 2011, the largest share of Muslim immigrants in Canada were from Pakistan. You can also see here how there were not that many Pakistanis in Canada prior to 1990, and we've really seen an increase in Pakistanis from 1992 to today. If we look at the difference in some kind of socioeconomic characteristics and backgrounds of the Pakistani diaspora in the US and in Canada, you can see that the diaspora in the US is uh, um, slightly better off, earning a generally higher income and more educated, having higher, bachelor, ha having higher rates of Pakistanis who hold bachelor's degrees and advanced degrees, with also less unemployment, less people under the poverty line, and a higher share of households with high income. Now, I hope that just gave you a quick overview of the history of migration in Pakistan, both to Pakistan and from Pakistan. Again, if you wanna learn more about the current day situation, please check out the migration policy and governance video and our current situation of migration in Pakistan today. Also check out our other country study videos and many of the other explainer videos on the channel. Please do engage with us. Let us know your own experiences with migration. Do like, subscribe, and comment here, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.